talking just because he's been Please Superman. Please. I'm talking <laughs> your hero. Delon's our hero. You guys ready? Well, we're ready to ask him a question. We have two Q and A mics set up in the middle of the row. Uh, go ahead. Feel free to start lining up now. We're trying to get to as many questions as we can for our gentleman, who you may know as one of Ramona's evil exes, the vegan from one of my all-time favorite movies, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. You know this guy as Superman. And now you know it's a different superhero. If you've ever watched The Flash or Arrow, as the Adam. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear for your very own Brandon Ralph. Star view, the up to the stars. It's good. This is a great setup here. How does it feel to be home? It's awesome. I love coming home. Seeing my parents. My parents are here. Right. And right in the front. Everybody say hi, Brandon's parents. Hi, Brandon's parents. So, uh, when you come back home, is there a routine? Is there places you have to go? Uh. Yeah, I mean, the places I try to go, um, have to, sometimes falls by the wayside, because, you know, got stuff to do, gotta be here, gotta be there. Um, but, um, see my parents, my family, um, there's a restaurant called Hawk downtown, HOQ, which is awesome, I've been going to quite a bit. Um, yeah, there's a lot of cool spots happening um, in, uh, in Des Moines now. The East I Village, you know, I have to go to the movies a lot of times, over with Jordan Creek when I have more time. Um, there's so much to do here now that there wasn't when, when I was growing up. But it's been about 16 years since I lived here, so I'm getting old now. I, I gotta say, I'm impressed. This is my first trip to Des Moines. I've never been here before, and you guys have impressed, I think, the entire Wizard World staff. So give yourselves a round of applause. You guys have been outstanding. How often do you get to come back? Would you like some water? I'm good for now, but thank you. Anybody else want some water? <laughs> I have noticed that this area is very polite. That's been a very common theme. Unlike certain cities, like, I don't know if I should say it, like Philadelphia, not quite so. Uh, Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> I had a good time in Philadelphia, actually. Oh, yeah, that's like years ago. But it's not that uh, Philadelphia's no Des Moines. <laughs> <laughs> so, congratulations on, uh, on the Adam and the Legends Thank tomorrow. You. Uh, when does that debut? I don't know the exact date, but probably, I'm uh, thinking late January, after you wait forever for Arrow and Flash to come back. Uh, from the w long winter's night of the, of the break, uh, I think we'll all come back at the same time and have pretty explosive episodes. Uh, you, uh, I gotta say, you added to what are some incredible TV shows. I, I know there are a lot of Arrow fans out there. The Flash is probably my favorite new TV show. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there's a series of likable characters. And yet, you're probably the most likable of the likable characters. Yeah. I don't know about that, but I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely up there. Yeah, sure, I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> I, I, I would, I would, I hope that Ray is a likable guy. Uh, I certainly enjoy playing him, and, and uh, it's been a blast. You know, it's it's such a fun job. Um, this this one, uh, you know, I have a cool opportunity to, to do the thing that I do every day, but. There is a different, uh, different vibe, you know, different projects that you work on, but you know, it's a really good team, a couple of teams, two teams up there with Aaron Flash and now List of Tomorrow, and we all work really well together. You know, it's um, it's like the the college of 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 DC TV, and we're adding another school. Um, I think that's probably a really good like analogy. <laughs> I'm trying it out. It's like a stand-up comedian working on his uh, new set. <laughs> Keep saying it. It'll, it'll work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> next, next con. Oh, we have a gentleman there that wants to ask a question. Good morning. Morning. Comic book characters tend to be two-dimensional in character. Um, well, they have to be. They're drawn that way, right? <laughs> um, what do you do as an actor to flesh out the characters in, say, Superman or 
My favorite one, uh, what is it, the atom? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, good question. Um, you know, with Superman Returns and, and, and that version of Superman, I think there was quite a bit of character, thankfully, built into the script and the idea of the overall story. Um, so I didn't have to do tons there. And, and then, since we were doing a loose sequel of uh, Superman 1 and 2, kind of, um, there was all that backstory that I was kind of filling in. I had to assimilate, I had to, as if I had had that experience, um, put that into uh, my portrayal. Um, so, you know, the other aspect of it, I guess, is just living, imagining, I mean, what, it, what I do for my preparation is I imagine what it would be like to be Superman. That's what I did for, for months. Uh, you know, how would he deal with this situation? How would he deal with this situation? How does he deal with conflict, um, jealousy, um, you know, helping people not fight, um, have a peaceful resolution to things? Uh, you know, what does he do with all the knowledge that he has? Uh, so just all these questions, which, you know, are actually pretty important questions for everyone, um, you know, not just Superman. So that actually paid dividends on my own life in many ways. Uh, I started to think about, you know, how I interact with people on a daily basis and think, oh, yeah, I can, there's a lot I can do to be, be more like Superman in my own life. Um, not just, he's not just a superhero, right? So um, that was kind of that process. And then with Ray Palmer, there's so much in the, in the script. Does it sound like a double, or is it just because I'm sitting where you guys hear me all right? Yeah. I'm not doubling their voices, yeah. okay. So I'll just deal with it. <laughs> um, yeah, we have an echo up here. Yeah. <clears throat> My son would love that. Echo! Echo! <laughs> He's two and a half. Uh, so Ray Palmer, back to Ray Palmer. Um, you know, there's great stuff in the script, and, and Ray changed just a little bit from the first couple episodes in. I, I kind of made a decision that I wanted him to be just that little bit more likable than maybe he was in the first couple episodes. Um, and I think that's, that was just a, uh, a leveling out of what the writer's room, the producers were looking for, and what they thought the character should be. And then having me come in and present what I, how I felt all that felt to me. And so he was a, he wasn't that rough around the edges, but he was a little bit, you know, showboater at the beginning with Oliver and winning over uh, the company and all that. Um, but that slowly, for me anyway, um, turned into just him being extremely excited about everything in life and fantastic inventions and what's not to like about uh, about uh, science and building things. Um, so so that's kind of it. It's just being open to to growth and changing in the moment. To answer the, back to the question, um, with Ray, I didn't have to do a lot. Um, it was knowing the, the basics of the history of the character, where he was going to be going forward, and then just filling in, getting to fill in the blanks uh, with the performance and with the words from the from the writers, and then working off the lovely Emily Better cards. Um, you know, helped make that character. Yeah. Well, your fellow heroes, Wonder Woman, has a question. Now. Oh yes, hello. Um, so, what is it like um, when you were a kid seeing all these iconic heroes and then all of a sudden you are these iconic heroes, but when you go out in public, people see you as the Adam, they see you as Superman, your son has probably seen you. <laughs> well, he hasn't seen me as in person as those things, although I did show him, I FaceTimed with him one day, actually when we were shooting the Legends of Tomorrow um, trailer, teaser piece, and I was in the suit the Adam suit without the helmet. I didn't let him see that happen. I had the helmet and I put it on. I said, like, I'm a robot. And he thought that was cool because he likes robots. <laughs> he didn't really know what the Adam was. He just thought it was kind of a cool costume. And he loves costumes, so you know, what kid doesn't? That, I guess what is that like then being a hero every day? Uh, you know, um, I dwell to my son, I'm a hero every day. Um, <laughs> I hope. Um, I, you know, it just becomes part of I don't stop and think about it, I guess you can't. Or, or it's, if I stopped and thought about what that meant every day, I probably wouldn't get out of bed because it's, it's a little overwhelming, so I just keep moving on, moving forward, and put a smile on my face, and, uh, and um, 
Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a lot to wrap, to wrap my brain around still, you know, the whole Superman process. Um, you know, it's almost 10 years ago now for me. And um, it's, while it happened, I know there are photos and all that, and I have the memories of it. And I'm a different, um, you know, more evolved person from that time. It just, it makes all of who I am. So it stands out, but you just keep going, you add those little pieces to, to who you are and keep going on. And, um, you know, I'm just blessed and grateful to have the opportunity that I have to, you know, talk to everyone and, and put smiles on people's faces, I guess. That's a hard question to answer. I don't know if I'm getting close to it, but keep checking in with me. <laughs> You're much more responsible about it than I would be. I'd be like, I'm not getting out of bed today. I'm Superman. <laughs> much more responsible. Speaking of Superman, yeah. just I want to get once again say welcome home. Thanks, I got. Uh, you know, you grew up here in Iowa. You know, we don't get stuff like this. So, you know, God bless you for coming back. You deserve it. At first, I wasn't. I wasn't gonna. I, they, didn't, they didn't ask me. They didn't know us from Iowa. I was like, guys, come on. <laughs> My question for you is, how old were you and was there a certain point in your life when you decided I want to be an actor someday? And did you have any Hollywood heroes that kind of inspired you to get into that profession? Hmm, good question. Uh, I really didn't dream of really being an actor until I was an actor. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, that's weird to say, but until I started, really started the journey when I was about 19, um, I had, I didn't, I was like, yeah. yeah, I'm going to be an actor. I'm from Iowa. I'm going to be in, you know, from a small town in Norwalk. I'm going to go to Hollywood and be an actor. Um, it seemed ridiculous. Um, even though I loved movies and, and uh, you know, I was going to the University of Iowa as an English major. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And Cyclones when they're not playing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, That's totally true. So, uh, uh, <laughs> got lost in college sports. <laughs> so, uh, the University of Iowa. There we go. Uh, and uh, I thought maybe I'd write a screenplay someday, and, and that would put me in the movie business. Um, but, because uh, I grew up performing, my parents were both musicians, and it was in the family, but it wasn't, you know, anything I thought of doing for a real career. Uh, until, you know, summer, uh, summer-ish time, spring break of my, of my freshman year, I kind of looked into modeling and acting in just a point to make money as a, as a poor college student. I made to New York and a couple other things, and then I found myself out in, in L.A. and it, it worked out. Um, but, uh, so that was, it was, it was, it was the whole process. It was like, am I doing this? I guess I'm doing this. It seems like it's, I guess I'll go there, I'll do that. You know, it was kind of walking through a door instead of, I could have been afraid, I guess. And, and not, and not walk through the door and take any opportunities ahead of me. But thankfully I had very supportive parents and that helped me not second guess myself. Made it out to LA and I would say, though I can give you a more of a distinct answer or definite answer was when I had my first job as an actor um, on the show Odd Man Out. I said five words and it was a sitcom so it was a live studio audience. And I went out there and just uh, laughed, you know, making people, I don't think I made them laugh. But being a part of that, feeling the energy of the room um, was amazing. I was like, yeah, I'm hooked. This is it. I'm doing it. I'm in. Um, and that was about a month and a half into my expedition. And that was you know, 16 years ago, 15 years ago. So that was the kind of the defining moment for me. And there was a second half to the question. Oh, Hollywood Heroes. Um, well, you know, because I didn't have that growing up, I didn't really necessarily, I don't know that I had heroes, um, but movies that defined me, i give you that, which is kind of my love of film, would be um, Jim Henson films. You know, my sister and I used to watch Ad Nauseam, uh, Dark Crystal, and, uh, and she and, and Labyrinth, um, and we didn't have it, we didn't have, a, we didn't have it, uh, a, a VCR, for a long time. So we had to rent a VCR from the, the grocery store or the video place. We'd take it home uh, and watch and watch. But we rent the same movies every time, you know. It's so nice. That's great. Thanks for that question. Hey, how you doing? Uh, 
Uh, first of all, like everyone else, I just want to say, you know, next to Milton Home, it's really cool having Superman, like a Superman who comes from Des Moines and knows where Pizza Tacos is. Lots of connections, like, my, I mean, even I can say, like, my mother works with her sister in law. I have known at least one guy who went to high school with you. Or <laughs> uh, and I've met your Pee Wee soccer coach, you and Jason Wallace. So, <laughs> it's just, it's cool to have Superman come from you know, your hometown. So, uh, but I, what I wanted to ask was, um, just uh, back in the day when they were still planning Superman Returns 2, you could uh, shed me light on what Singer was sharing any details with you or what was planned, or were you getting ready for that, or more of those kind of... Uh, you know, loosely given an idea of, of what the script uh, would look like, and I, you know, I don't even actually remember so much about that, but he was, I think he was really intent on making another film before we went back, and that, that film was Valkyrie, I believe. Um, there were some things going on in the studios and changing of power positions and, and, and things like that. Um, so, you know, it was, it was always kind of like, yeah, we want to, we think we want to, for a long time. So, you know, I think there was going to be, uh, you know, you're going to figure out what to do with Jason and his, whether he was going to become Superboy or lose his power somehow. And there were various ways to do that. Um, without killing him, um, one of the big one of the big sticky, uh, sticking points was what was Richard, and how to have him exit the situation without it, you know, um, Superman breaking up the family, you know, type of situation. So there's kind of some 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 tricky positions that they we put ourselves into story wise that, that were hard to get out of, but um, I think we could have done it successfully. And then there was like you know um, a terrorist plot. Uh, and uh, post talks of um, you know, what was uh, bizarro maybe coming in and, and being an event. Um, and maybe those things, I, mean, I might be thinking about my own ideas too. Though. <laughs> so I, started, I started to develop my own ideas after a while, so I don't know which were mine and which were his anymore. And uh, Mike and, and Dan, the writers, but um, it certainly would have been fun. Uh, thank you. And, and, and now, we've, now you've asked me a question, so now we actually have. From from six to five to four to three to two to one connection. What can I make this count? If uh, you had a chance to play a villain, then that you forgot those. Well, I would like to play a villain again. I've played a couple. Um, I can't give you an exact. I can't. I don't. I don't. I don't give you an exact name of somebody because I don't have a. Uh, <coughs> I mean, I guess if they ever did, um, like. Uh, uh, <laughs> some books that I that I read. I guess if they ever did uh, like Wheel of Time series, um, Robert Jordan. Um, not that I, I wouldn't want to be a bad guy, but a villain and think of like Aswadian or somebody like that. One of the, um, what the heck are they called? Like, Forsaken. Forsaken, you know, one of the Forsaken would be kind of cool. Trollock, just dressed up as a Trollock. <laughs> anyway, that's way nerdy. For, uh, that, that, that's too nerdy for God. That's my, that's my, that's my, that's my nerd lives in that world. Uh, yeah. Uh, shout out to everybody who might be watching this at home or in your car, hopefully not in your car. Eyes on the road. Somewhere on the live con TV. Hi. Uh, I just wanted to say that, first of all, Superman Returns is the movie, my personal record for how many times I see a movie in theaters. I saw it six and a half times. Oh, wow. <laughs> Sneaking in? Oh, yeah. I snuck in to see it. How many times did you pay for it? I paid for it six times. Oh, and, oh not to count the times that you snuck in. I think after six, you get to sneak in. I was going to see another movie and it ended, and Super Mario Brothers was still playing, and I'm like, yeah, I'm going in. And they're like, yeah, no, you're not. I can do it. Just tell them I said it was okay. I just wanted to know, like, what was your favorite 
part of Superman Returns, like if you have a favorite scene to shoot, or even when you watch it and you're like, wow, I really killed it at that scene. <laughs> <laughs> Some of my favorite stuff that I that I enjoy watching back, I guess, is the stuff with Kitty Kowalski, um, saving the car, putting it down, going to the hospital, because that was the more enjoyable, like lighter side, charming side of Superman that I got to play. I didn't get to do that too much with Lois, you know, um, because of all the drama and the backstory. Um, you know, didn't get to have that rooftop scene that Chris had, you know. So that was that was that was my that was clo as close as it got for me. Movie. So I really enjoy that and have fond memories of that. And also filming that stuff, um, going through the trees uh, when I want to go uh, fly her to, to the hospital. We were actually outside, strung up in the trees, and the, the wires and everything, and that was really, and it was nighttime, so that was pretty epic. It really, that was one time it really kind of felt like I was actually flying. Uh, so that was pretty magical. Thank you. Yeah. Hello, there. Hey. Hi. Uh, huge fan, Brandon. Um, I just have one question. Um, you played all your fans of superheroes. You played Dylan Dog, you played Vegan, you played Superman, you played. Oh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> Small one. I know. If you had a superpower, what would it be? Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, Why? Because I can go anywhere I want to. And I thought, uh, take somebody with me. Probably only one person unless I work out more. <laughs> um, travel the world, see what everyone's up to, and, and see the world from a bird's eye view. I mean, I think that's just kind of epic uh, to, be, to uh, you know, see the world from that far, get, get a better perspective of, of life and how everyone's living. Very true. Thank you so much. Thanks. <laughs> I think we have a question from a very sparkly young lady. Yeah, nice costume. Who was more fun to play, Superman or the Adam? Oh, that's a tough question. You know, they both. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I give you a uh -huh. favorite. You know, they're both um, awesome in their own way. Um, I'm so much older uh, in good ways and, and uh, uh, wiser now that I'm playing the Adam, so I can enjoy it a lot more than I Superman. Superman. Not that I didn't enjoy playing Superman, but I was, there was a lot of stress and, you know, uh, my first big movie and uh, it was a big deal. Uh, but I get to, f I, I kind of get to do, I, I get to fly in both of them a little bit, I get to save the day, I get to be silly, um, being Ray Palmer and Clark Kent. So it's actually the perfect character suited for me to play another type of version of Superman almost in a different way. So, um, Fantastic. But thank you for the question. It kind of sounds like you're picking yeah. <laughs> well, it's current right now. It's you, know, you, know, you can't talk Superman in many ways, but I'm having a blast as as Ray Paul was. Very fair, very fair. Yeah, you kind of has to do uh, the ad one just because he's doing it now. Uh, I've seen Dylan Dog a few times lately, and which is that one of the movies you would have seen to progress? I would have, I would have loved to have done another Dylan Dog. You know, people ask about that. Not a lot, but some people ask about that. I can do a sequel. Well, if we go back in time, and everyone in this feet, in this auditorium, and everyone everywhere paid for a ticket in the theater, <laughs> we could be doing another one. Pay for a ticket. Pay, pay for a ticket. Yeah, I'm not watching on Netflix. We're sneaking in. We're sneaking in. And this was not six months. We've established that rule. Um, the Brandon Roth rule of six. <laughs> uh, Dylan Dog, yes, I, would have, I had a blast shooting that uh, with, with Sam Huntington, my buddy, and uh, and I like I love that world. Uh, you know, that, that, that was a that was a film that you know had for many years been wanting to get made, wanting to get made, and we finally got it made, but. Sometimes things fall apart and money goes this way and money goes that way and when you get to doing it, it's not have all the money and the stuff that you thought you were gonna have and you did it. So instead of being in New York to shoot it, we were in New Orleans, which was great, made it different, 
and you know, it is. It movie became what it what it is, and I'm, I'm uh, I think it's a fun movie. It could have been a lot more, um, and uh, you know, I guess there's always if enough people watch it for free on Netflix <laughs> in three years, and they want to, somebody wants to kickstart it, then you know, you can make your money and see it. But I don't, I don't think that I don't think that's it. Probably would never happen. But uh, I did enjoy it. Did you like it? Oh yeah. Okay, and, and just. To, just to clarify something, I don't. Dylan wasn't actually a superhero. Um, it is a comic book movie, but um, and he did kind of maybe have some powers, but we didn't really figure that out. And I don't know if they call him superpowers, but anyway. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm done. <laughs> I'm about Thank you. Thank you for coming to Des Moines. I enjoyed you as Superman, and I'm really enjoying you as Ray Palmer on The Arrow. The Arrow is probably one of my favorite TV shows right now. Um, seeing that you're going to be starting this Legends of Tomorrow, are we going to be seeing you make some appearances in Arrow again or in The Flash? I will definitely be back in season four of Arrow uh, for the, the uh, some number of episodes leading up to Legends of Tomorrow. Uh, yeah, we'll watch. We'll we'll watch Ray's exit basically from from um, Starling City or Star City, which apparently didn't really take up take off very well. Uh, it's supposed to be called Star City now, apparently. But <laughs> uh, yeah, so we'll see that. And as far as Flash goes, I don't know. I I, I would imagine that I'll be appearing a little bit in Flash um, uh, over the course of, of, of season two of Flash. Um, Kind of, and, and I think other characters will be appearing in other shows too, as we kind of all, it all is kind of building up to the creation of, of, of the team for Legends of Tomorrow. So, yeah, it should be a pretty awesome and exciting, you know, beginning of both seasons of, of Arrow and Flash for you know, so many different storylines, but all the more fun. Um, I just have one more really quick question. When you were prepared for the Superman movie, did you? Uh, look at any of the other people that played Superman just to kind of see how they played the character before you took the role. I wasn't the first. <laughs> yeah. Well, you did, you did mention Chris earlier. I'm assuming you're referring to Christopher, Christopher Reed. Reed. Yes, I've heard of him. Uh, <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, yes, I, I, absolutely. Um, I mean, I, Chris is, was and still is my Superman. When I think of Superman, I think of him. And always will. Um, and um, without him I, and his performance, I wouldn't be sitting here. <laughs> Truly, I think. Um, so, so yes, I, I did go back and watch the films because I was in here right. um, already from 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 youth and and uh, years before. Um, I did watch a little bit of uh, the little pieces that I could find of Kirk Allen at the time and George Reeves. Um, there wasn't as much to take from them um, to use, except that what I wanted to do, and by reading some of the comics and reading some of the history of, of, of Siegel and Schuster, was just kind of understand the backbone, uh, the history, rather, of Superman, what, it, what he meant at the time, all through time, leading up to now, to really get an idea of what people wanted to see of Superman. Um, I mean, everybody wants something a little bit different, but um, what does Superman uh, mean in society at that point? And, and what can I bring, knowing, having that knowledge of the people that have been, how it been depicted in, in, in cartoon and in drawn form? That uh, was all kind of the, some of the stuff that I did in research. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so Ray has a lot going on with like, his wife and stuff in the backstory, and that hasn't really been explored so much. So in either Legend of Tomorrow or an Arrow, would you be interested in doing that or getting your flashbacks maybe? Assuming yeah. you're not dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, because of the Legend of Tomorrow trailer, we can see that I wasn't dead. Um, very, very small. Um, yes, I would like to see the, some of the backstory. And there was talk about doing that during the season three of, of Arrow, it just didn't happen. Um, doing kind of the back to the, I guess, the last couple of episodes of season two and, and, and all the events that happened there uh, and when my fiance was killed. Um, I, I would imagine that there, there, we will do that at some point. Uh, and I, at, uh, 
be excited about that. Even though I had to be sad for that. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> First, I'd like to thank you for being a great ambassador for Iowa. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, I'd like to ask you, throughout your career, what would you say you had the most fun doing? <laughs> Answering your question right now. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, if that's, if I'm really present, being right here, right now with you guys. Um, no, it's pretty, I mean, it's pretty awesome, really. Um, Anytime I get to make people laugh and make myself laugh, one of my favorite days on set. So, um, I, I, you know, I, I truly am having a great time playing Ray Palmer because I just go and I, I, I just get to be silly, and that's okay. And uh, but I had a, an amazing time doing uh, Zach and Mir oh, sorry. Well, that was great too. Uh, Scott Pilgrim. Um, and just being over the top and outrageous. Anytime I can kind of let loose and just, you know, um, uh, like that, uh, I have a great time. Um, so those are, any, any of the comedy stuff is a highlight. Partners was a highlight for me, you know, getting to do a live studio audience and, and um, have the, the audience um, hear, hear the laughter, you know, right there when you make a joke and it works. It was fun. So, any of the funny bits. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, I'm a big, scan, uh, big fan of Scott Milgram, um, and the Todd segment is by far the best part. Uh, the line, chicken is it vegan, is probably my, f I, I roll off the couch every time. Um, <laughs> they wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that kind of goes with my question. Um, how much of that, like your delivery, comes from you versus the writing, versus the directing, versus the source material? Because obviously the source material is very different for that segment. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a little bit of uh, some dialogue changes um, to fill out that scene a little bit. Um, but mostly, it's, I think it's pretty close to a lot of what's in the in Brian's uh, in the book. Um, I did a, like a, a a tape. I read, went in, and I had a meeting with Edgar Wright, the director, and then um, I went in and read with him and Michael McCall, who actually wrote the screenplay. And Michael read. The other lines, and I, you know, was on tape with the casting director and, and Edgar in the room, and we kind of—that was the first time they got to see it, and I got to like go. I hope this is what they're looking for, and it kind of didn't change from that. My it was my original like idea about him was what it, you know, turned into what you see on on uh, film. Then putting the wig on made me amplified even more, made me feel like you know Todd, and then you know, the voice kind of came in sometimes. Um, so the voice, I think, was something that I brought in. And, uh, the only, it was pretty much, I got to do kind of what I wanted to do. Edgar didn't tweak too much of, of, of how I was performing. Todd, with the exception of, uh, he helped me with, I think he helped me with that line, chicken isn't vegan. Because um, I, I had one way in my head that I thought it was the funny way. And I think he gave me, he gave me insight into the delivery. It was actually in the movie that, that, that made it work even better than what I, what I, uh, First thought. So um, it was a lot. Just you know, I took that was that's how I interpreted Brian Brian's character from from watching it, from reading it, and living you know and, and enjoying the, reading the book. That's just what I popped into my head, and everybody was cool with it. So that's how Todd was. And I think it's actually. I mean, to me, it seems like that's how he should talk. So I don't know how everybody else envisioned him. So I think it worked. What's your advice for somebody who wants to be an actor? <laughs> I hate to say the word don't. Um, <laughs> it's just because just because it can be a, a, a very cruel place. Um, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. Look, what do I say if somebody wants to be an actor? Um, cool. I applaud your create the, the creative world that you want to go into. And you shouldn't, don't listen to me, because what I say anyway, who knows what I'm going to answer. Um, so for, forget about the don't. Um, I, this question was asked to me the other day, and I think that the key thing that I would say about that is um, just, just be prepared. You have to be prepared for people um, saying no a lot. And um, not taking that personally. Um, 
It doesn't mean you don't, it doesn't mean there's not value in the no, there's not something, an opportunity to learn something, but it doesn't mean that you aren't a good person or that you don't have value, right? So actors, we take things very personally sometimes. There's a lot of rejection in this business. There's a lot of rejection in life, everybody. So, you know, <laughs> acting is just a microcosm for other aspects of life, but um, we may get told no more on a daily basis than everyone else, I don't know. Um, but there's a lot of rejection and feeling like, oh, why didn't I get this part, or why didn't I do this, or I, I could have done that, you know, or, you know, sometimes it's simple as, I didn't get a role because my hair is the same color as another actor that's on the show, and it might confuse people. Seriously. Um, or, uh, or my face reminds the producer of an ex-boyfriend or girlfriend, and they don't, you know, like that, so you don't get the job. You can't, you just have to be, okay with who you are and, and forget about what everybody else says, you go on to the next thing. That's the biggest thing. Whether it's a play for high school, a play for college, or local theater, no's are going to be there. And uh, that's the hardest thing to deal with as an actor, so just be prepared for that and just keep plugging along. And be open to other opportunities, I would say, in the acting field, in the film and television theater world, because you may think you want to be an actor now, but you may have more enjoyment being a set decorator, being a writer, being a director, being any of the other many facets of this world, all of which allow you to be a part of the magic of film, television, and entertainment, which is a pretty cool place to be. There are a lot of people who are, uh, there are way more applicants than our positions until we start to fund the program more. Um, but if you search AmeriCorps, you'll find it. It's a great note to wrap things up on. For those of you who didn't get to ask your question, go to this table, get an autograph, ask the questions there. Everybody else, go to the autograph table, go get photo ops, and enjoy your very own Brandon Ralph! Bye, everybody. Thank you.